up team and welcome back to Guy Maverick. I'm Eric, founder of GuyMaverick.com and the Guy Maverick YouTube channel. Today we're talking about Styling on a Budget Part 2. two, two. Styling on a Budget is a two-part series where I let you guys know in two parts the resources, the websites, and the places I shop at to give you guys a starting point to build your own personal style. In part one, I talked about the three main websites I've used the last eight years to help build my personal style. In case you missed it or in case you forgot, they were dapper.com, articlesofstyle.com, and primermagazine.com. Individually, those three websites offer a comprehensive amount of information regarding personal style, and together, they offer the biggest encyclopedia of style that I've ever seen. Those three websites matched up with guymaverick.com, you will build your personal style in no time. In this part, I let you guys know the places that I shop at, where I get my basics, my t-shirts, my pants, my jeans, my underwear, my outerwear, all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned, don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, take a look at last week's video in this part one in case you missed it, and uh, let's get started with part two. I'm going to let you guys know where I personally shop to buy my menswear items. This shirt, for instance, is from Macy's, the INC brand. It's a short sleeve denim type shirt. You can wear it on its own. You can wear it as an over shirt uh, with another shirt underneath if you'd like. It feels really good. Um, I like it. It's stretchy. You can roll up the sleeves as well. This is uh, not really planned to be part of the series, but... I figure it's actually, in case anybody wonders, right? You can roll up the sleeves. I look like a beast. I look like a bull. Let's get back to the series. So tiering for number one in my list of most used places I shop is a place that I've discovered relatively recently, in the last year or so, and I really never thought that they would be so high up on my list, but it's Target. Yes, I did say Target. I know some of you guys may be thinking, Target? You go to Target for your menswear basics? Yes, and I'll tell you why right now. So Target, a few years ago, they had Massimo and they had Marona brand, and suffice to say, their selection for menswear products, basics and things like that, were lackluster. They fit awkwardly, they were too big, they were too small, their patterns weren't the greatest, they weren't the best quality either. I used to buy stuff from those brands back in the day. Um, their t-shirts, their button-up shirts, they felt scratchy, they felt stiff, they felt like tissue paper. Then, in 2016, they introduced something called Goodfellow & Co. Now, Goodfellow & Co. is a reinvention of their menswear line. And they did that for all their brands, their women's, their petites, their men's, their ladies. They did a complete rebranding of all their brands all across their store. Just we happened to get Goodfellow & Co. and Original Use. So Goodfellow & Co., what they did is they took their casual Mossimo line, their fancier type clothing Marona line, they combined them and they completely changed their selection. Now they offer chinos, dress shirts, dress slacks, button-up shirts, t-shirts, they have shoes, they have belts, they have a lot of different things. Now some of you guys may be thinking, Eric, they offered that stuff previously. Yes, they did, but not like this. Let me tell you, their chinos fit wonderfully. They have so many different fits. Straight, slim straight, athletic, skinny, slim taper. They have so many different fits and so many different colors. I bought two personally, a navy and a beautiful teal color. Another thing about their clothing line is their colors are saturated. You don't see any of these faded teals or faded blues or faded grays. It's gray, it's navy blue, it's teal. It's brown, it's saturated, it looks good. So 100%, Target has been my number one place to go to for the last few months. Now I don't get everything from Target. They still have some things that aren't really up to my personal preference when it comes to fit or style. So the next place I shop at, I tend to get my jeans almost exclusively from there. And they are American Eagle. Yes, I've tried their slim straights, their slim, their skinny jeans. I Jumped away from the skinny jeans very quickly though after realizing someone like me does not pull off skinny jeans like I used to. 
Now, the reason I go to American Eagle for their jeans, American Eagle has a vast array of fits, of colors, washes, styles. They have different sales going on all the time. It's crazy. For the men, American Eagle claims 13 fits, 146 washes, and 39 sizes. That is massive. Now, the one problem I have with American Eagle that I don't have as much with Target is their stores aren't normally stocked up with as much of those 146 washes or 13 fits or 39 sizes as you would like. So I am forced sometimes more often than not to shop online on their online website. Now what I've done is I'll go in, I'll choose a fit and then I'll choose a size. I'll try it on. If it fits me, I know that that fit, that stretch level, which they have like four different stretch levels by the way, and that size is exactly what I need so that I can go online, find that style, pick it up, but just check a, check a different wash. And it's all good. It works out for me. I have to wait like a week or whatever, but I'm patient. If you're patient, you can do it too. Next section is outerwear. So I don't have a specific place to go for my outerwear. It kind of ranges across brands. I do have one brand that I have a few more pieces from than other places, but my outerwear goes like this. I have a Levi's denim jacket, a tan leather jacket from Zara, a zip-up windbreaker from Adidas, a hoodie from Target, Goodfellow & Co., and a few other things I don't have in my closet at the moment, like a Harrington jacket from Zara or a pullover hoodie from Nike. Next is button-up shirts. So button-up shirts, like this one from Macy's, I tend to go to a few different places. Macy's, Banana Republic, J. Crew uh, for button ups. Uh, let's see what else. Target is another place I like to go, of course. You guys might want to know this, but you might not. Underwear. Where do I get my underwear? Macy's. They're Calvin Klein brand. Now, I've tried this brand. I've used it for the last what, about five years or so. It's the Boxer Brief Type in black, of course, and gray. These have been my exclusive underwear choices for the last few years, but I am curious on trying something like the Uniqlo Air uh, underwear, whatever those ones are called. Um, that's something from Pair of Thieves. I hear those are pretty solid as well. So I'm open to try. I think I will. I'll let you guys know when I do. Socks. So I get my socks from Target. As you can tell, Target and Macy's are coming up a lot because I use those places pretty exclusively. Um, Target, I get just the Hanes, the low-cut black Hanes socks, nothing crazy. Now my dress shirts, I get my dress shirts at a few different places. I've gone to Kohl's, which I love Kohl's for the dress shirts. Their Apt 9 brand, oh my god. The selections they have, the colors, the fits, it's crazy. The feeling, they feel different across different types. And their sales, their prices on those things. If you guys haven't tried Apt 9 for your dress shirts, I highly recommend them. They're different than they were five years ago when they was all baggy and oversized and everything. These are slim, they're form-fitting, they're tailored, whatever you need it to be. Their colors, their patterns, they're awesome. The prices are fantastic. For dress shirts, you cannot go wrong with Kohl's. Now, Kohl's isn't the only place I get my dress shirts at. I've tried J. Crew, I've tried Brooks Brothers, I've tried other places as well, J.C. Penny brand. There's been a couple of places that I have found for me that the dress shirts fit superb, their quality is fantastic, and most importantly, their prices are top notch. So besides Kohl's, I've also gotten my dress shirts from Uniqlo, one of them, um, it fits pretty well. Now, dare I say, it does shrink in the length a bit when I did wash it. I wash it like a normal t-shirt would. So another place that I've gone to get my dress shirts at, Banana Republic. I love Banana Republic. Their fits are awesome. The prices are a little bit higher than you'd see at like a Target or like a Uniqlo or things like that. Um, but they're definitely quality and you can tell by their stitching, you can tell by their fabrics and their patterns and the textures of the shirt themselves. I have a beautiful pink one that I don't have actually in my closet right now. Just so you know guys, I did take a bit of my closet recently and kind of downsized it, packed it away in the store. It was my winter clothes I guess you can think of so it's coming to summer right now here in California so I'm missing some of the things that I would normally have. Now Banana Republic has amazing dress shirts. I, even though I did get some dress shirts from them, wouldn't necessarily go to them first for my dress shirts. I have another place for that. Where I would go to Banana Republic for 
are their chinos, but their button-up shirts. Now their button-up shirts, I love them. The patterns are awesome. The fits are awesome. Now, like I said earlier, the prices do range a little bit higher when they're on sale. They're, they're great. You can't go wrong with that. I've gotten a plethora of button-ups from Banana Republic as well as their sweaters, like their V-neck sweaters, their crew neck sweaters, things like that. Their outerwear is fantastic as well. Um, Banana Republic has been, for me, in the last few years, if I needed to get something a little bit more upscale or higher fashion or kind of fancier, I would go to Banana Republic first for those kinds of needs. Now, recently I've discovered a place online, they're based out of the UK, but their dress shirts are fantastic. I love their dress shirts. I think I'm probably going to exclusively get my dress shirts from them, mostly, but it's Charles Tierwit. Now, Charles Tierwit is a company started by Nick Wheeler uh, a few years ago, a couple decades ago, I believe, and they make dress shirts, ties, um, things like that, casual shirts and all those type of things. And since discovering them a couple of years ago, I bought their teal dress shirt. Let me show you real quick. Sorry. And I said teal. I meant twill. It's a twill, non-iron, 100% cotton dress shirt. Of course, I dry clean this thing, but the collar feels fantastic. Look at that placket. It's beautiful. This dress shirt, with it being non-iron, it looks silky. It looks great. Um... I discovered their dress shirts and uh, well, immediately once I found my fit, which took me a couple tries to find my exact fit, um, I gotta say they're my number one place right now. Shoes are the next thing. I shop at a bunch of different places for shoes. I've gone to Kohl's for my Converse, I've gone to the Van Store for my Vans, I've gone to Aldo. Um, just so you know, Aldo is my pretty primary place to shop for dress shoes. They have these... Uh, double monk straps. Um, I have them in black. I use them for work and stuff and they've been awesome. They are such good shoes and they're so comfortable. As soon as you put them on, even after you break them in, they're extremely comfortable the whole way through. Their pricing, not bad at all. They're in the 50s, 60s range, a $70 range, which is affordable. All those for dress shoes. Sneakers, I tend to go for Vans and Converse. Um, running shoes, Nike, Sperry and gap for my flip-flops. Now you guys might ask this, but these bad boys right here, these are the Warby Parker glasses and they're the Burke. Now, I got these a couple years ago. Uh, these were $95, um, including shipping with my prescription in them directly from the Warby Parker website. Now, I chose these ones, I like the white stripe going along the side. I like the bigger frame. I think it frames my face better. Now that's where Warby Parker has become my primary place for glasses. Of course, I'm open to other places as well, but their prices are good. Their designs and their styles are awesome. Um, I tend to really like them. Their customer service is great. This is my second pair of these glasses. The first pair I had, I was at work. I was cleaning them, so I took them off and I was a little rougher with these things. So I took them off. Actually, I'll just show you. Took them off, I was doing this, right? And I was like going real crazy, I was cleaning it up, and then I bent them. So I tried to bend them back and right in the middle, snapped off. I was shocked. I was at work, so I couldn't see. And so it was weird, I taped them up, I looked like a nerd for a few days. I contacted customer support at Warby Parker, I let them know what happened, I let them know that it was my fault a couple times and I'm totally okay with buying a new pair if I have to. They said no. We'll send you a box with the safe prescription. In that box, you send the old busted up pair back, free of charge. I was amazed. I was very grateful to Warby Parker, and I'll let that be known. Um, their customer service is top notch. I would say they're on par with like an Apple. And uh, if you're looking for glasses, you don't want to go for any lower end, cheaper type of glasses, but you want something that looks good, something that lasts, something that has good style, and also a company that'll back their product Orby Parker. Can't say no to them. Jewelry. So I'm not much of a jewelry kind of guy. I don't really wear rings or things like that or bracelets, but, but, I have always been a bit of a watch guy. And though I have watches from places like Nixon, I love their designs. The prices are just a little bit higher though, but Nixon, fantastic. Lately, if I want to go for something a little bit nicer of a watch, but not as big of a price, I tend to go for 
Invicta. Yes. This is an Invicta... Can't remember. Yes, it is cracked. It's um, my fault. I dropped it and cracked it. But these watches have been pretty awesome. I got them on the Black Friday sale. So I think they were like 30% off from the price originally or something like that. This one was like 70 bucks. They call it the Pepsi dial because, uh, you know, Pepsi red and blue. It's pretty, pretty awesome. And I just got to say, they're like, they're good watches. Uh, it is on my wrist. They're not too big. They're not too small. As you can see, I have kind of a smaller wrist than an average gentleman. I'm aware. I know. Uh, and so something like this doesn't look too huge on my wrist like something would, like other watches would. Uh, but it's not small where it might make my wrist look even smaller, like a girl's wrist. This does not have that problem. I have another watch of the same brand. It's a blue dial with gold. With Okay, so it's silver. Let me show you right here. Silver, gold, and blue, like a royal blue, and it looks, it looks like a Rolex. It's awesome. People ask me, "Is that a Rolex?" I immediately tell them no because I don't want to go through with that lie and be like, "Yeah, it is a Rolex." Oh, you know, all that kind of upkeep it takes to keep up the lie. So I just tell them, "No, it's a Victor. It's awesome." And I also got a rose gold one. It's uh, same thing. It's uh, stainless steel, and then it has a rose gold in the middle and rose gold top, and it's very fancy. I haven't gotten it sized yet, but. It's a damn good looking watch. That's where I've been getting my uh, jewelry from Invicta and you can find Invicta on Amazon.com. Keep an eye out for the future because of course, I'm gonna be doing a review on the Invicta watches. I'll put links in the description when I do those reviews of course. I'll show you guys my collection. I'll show you guys what I wanna buy, where I buy them, the best times to buy them and you'll see all about that. I'll try to make it look super cool, super dynamic, like one of those panoramic shot type of videos. I'm really excited for that. When it comes to headwear, I don't really wear hats or anything like that or beanies, so I wouldn't really know where to actually get those things. I don't have a place for that. Guys, I think that's it for Styling on the Budget Part 2. So you've heard me mention places like Target, uh, Macy's a lot. You've heard Amazon, you've heard a bit of Uniqlo, some Zara. Um, Kohl's is a place I go to as well, you've heard. And then kind of mixed matches of uh, like Levi's, Converse, Vans, things like that. Charles Tierwitz, um, other places like that. Banana Republic, you've heard of them too. What You heard me mention them. So I, I don't have a place that I go to for everything. A bunch of different places provide what I need in the fits, cost, and uh, colors that I need or that I want. And so I go to those places and I just mac mix, match them up, and uh, they work really well for me. So thanks for watching, Styling on the Budget, part one and part two. Keep an eye out because in the future, I will revisit the series for a part three and four as I see fit and as I see things that you guys might need to see or that I need to inform you guys about that I might have missed in this video or in the previous video. If you guys have any questions about anything that I mentioned in this video, you want, I'll try to provide as many links as I possibly can to the items that I've mentioned in this video in the description, but let me know. Leave me a comment below. Don't forget to check GuyMaverick.com for more information. Like, comment, subscribe. Click that notification bell right up there. Check back every Sunday and every Wednesday for new videos. I'm Eric, founder of GuyMaverick.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, you can do, you can do anything, anything, anything you set you your, set mind, your mind, mind to. See you guys next time.